my stomach was like just dying and there was no bathroom nearby for at least a couple miles so what i did is i squatted under a bridge squatted baby I i just unleashed a massive explosive load i couldn't even hold it I couldn't even hold it. And oh Ohio, my god. There's a, there's a lot of homeless people. Uh huh. I didn't realize it, but like 10 feet away from me was a homeless person oh, sleeping. Oh no! Wait one. Mm -mm, I got clapping there. It's too late. Nope. Don't do it. I don't know how these work. Badge is operating a mousetrap. That's never good. His generation has never seen a mousetrap like that. Guarantee you he doesn't understand how it works. I grew up in the upper middle class. You leave me alone. You don't know nothing about me. <laughs> we didn't have mice. <laughs> <laughs> how, does, how the frick do you work these things, man? Welcome back to another episode of Fishing After Dark with the Beard and the Badge. And of course, we are presented to you by Carl's Bait and Tackle. And uh, unlike Badge operating a mousetrap, you will find. Oh, did you get it working? I don't think so. It will touch the other end and see if it snaps no. your finger. <laughs> <laughs> Luckily, I have. There you go. A give it, give it a dangle. Give it a dangle. See if it works. See if it works. <sighs> Man, these things are not made in the upper middle class. Oh, that's why the mice were getting away. But unlike Badge, I'm trying to operate a mouse trap. You will find operating Carl's Bait and Tackle, aka ShopCarls.com, is super easy. You're going to find the best deals on everything that's fishing related: rod, reel, line, lures, googan baits, the whole nine yards, tackle bundles everything and in fact they're giving our listeners you guys a special promo to save money on your next order that we will discuss later on the podcast but big shout out to shop carl's as usual now uh you just got back from a vacation right i did man where I were did. you where were you colorado colorado yeah okay how was that it was cool man i didn't take a vacation um this summer just worked yeah. through the summer so it was really Felt good. It was kind of like something me and my wife have been talking about taking a trip. We like to take one every year for our anniversary. Yeah. So. When is y'all's anniversary? December. But we oh, go. Oh, gotcha. Ours is in January. How about that? Really? Yeah. I never even knew that. But yeah, that's kind of the weird thing about what we do for a living is we really can't take summer vacations because summertime is when we like cash our biggest checks. Yeah. You know, we make our biggest growth gains. So we really can't. Right. I mean, you can, but you just don't want to. Yeah. You know, I, just, I don't know. Especially you, because you have the young, younger channel you're really trying to build, so you definitely couldn't afford it. Well, that's good, man. Now, I have two questions. All right. When you told me that you were going to go to Colorado on vacation. All right. Okay. Oh, I got two questions. One, did you fish at all while you were there? Not once. Or any type of outdoor water sport? Um, no. What was the weather like there? This is not the second question. This is just to add on it, to the dude, first it was question. Like, really dry and like cool like I fall. Bet it was beautiful it was um, it was some of the most gorgeous things i've ever seen yeah I little bet. altitude sickness we got up about twelve thousand foot oh wow elevation that's really high high that's freaking high speaking of high my next question was going to be uh did i dabble what's what's the sticky green situation I mean, it was there. Did you hit him, hit him with a quick dab did you i actually i actually did not <laughs> i didn't do anything did anybody your family's not really down with that kind of stuff, huh? I mean, we, we don't have a problem with it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. We just, I, I don't even think I drank, man. Well, what home. the hell kind of vacation was this? My wife loves, like, hiking, dude. So okay. we were, like, treacherous hiking. Nice. And our hearts, like, up there, there's not as, no, there's not as much oxygen oh, yeah. in the air, right? Fact. Yeah. So The air's what they call thinner. Yeah. It's harder to, when you take a deep breath... Yeah. And your body is expecting to have this rush of oxygen. Right. And those real thin air, high altitude climates, your body is only getting like 70% of what a normal breath would get. Or that's what it feels like. Yeah. So, so yeah, it's crazy. Yeah. So we were up there and like by the end of a one mile hike, you're just dead because yeah. your heart's in overdrive. Fact. And yeah. by the time you get back to the hotel, you're like already dead. So <laughs> it's like, why, why kill yourself even more at yeah. that point? Well, time. I mean, that's what the sticky green does. It brings you back to life, my friend. <laughs> oh, does it? Well, I mean, that's just what I hear. I don't know. Uh, yeah, okay. <laughs> but, <laughs> dude, when we were in Afghanistan, I mean, uh, I hate to make this about me in a military story, but no, when you ahead. said altitude and, like, hiking and stuff, it was just like, 
Yeah, my second tour, the highest we ever got was only like close to 10,000 feet. But that's still up there, Which man. is freaking, well, it's two miles. Think yeah. about it. A mile is yeah. 5,280 feet, I think. Mm-hmm. So 10,000 is right there at two miles above sea level, which is insane. But um, yeah, we, 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 we would march, you know, go on uh, patrols all through the mountains and you know, never went further than like 10 or 12, 15 kilometers, which is probably like eight, nine, 10 miles. Yeah. But that's a freaking haul. You know what Dude, I mean? Bet, and that, and that kind of, like you say, it takes, it take, took us like a month yeah. to get used to breathing that air. You Did know? your and, stomach ever mess up on you? In what way? Like you eating a bowl of queso at rodeo right bad <laughs> right. or or like something else like i read that the stomach fluids that you have mm-hmm. are in liquid form at the sea level we're at right now okay we're at like a couple hundred you know maybe yeah, three four hundred this is pretty low elevation right yeah and when you go to that elevation of like ten thousand, that those liquids turn to gas and so, oh, you, so become you got gassy the gassiest I've ever been. Dude. A gas bag. I was a gas bag Just. on my wedding anniversary trip. <laughs> it was fantastic. <laughs> I wish I could have seen it. <laughs> Still dealing with that COVID, man. <laughs> dude, quit making jokes about it. I think I How had do you it. And it's to like feed your kids. Speaking <laughs> of COVID, dude, let me tell you something. I have a condition now because of COVID. Okay. Did I tell you this yet? What the whole like smell and taste thing? It's still going on. So you have lost your sense of taste, smell, with both, or which one? It actually, I, I still have a sense of taste and smell. It's just everything tastes like a dog kennel. Everything tastes bad. Yeah, yeah. Especially <laughs> coffee, fried foods, and some other foods like that. But. Well, you know, I heard somebody else on a podcast, may have even been Rogan, talking about... It's there's a it is a condition. It's a, there's a word. It's like uh, I can't even pronounce. It's well, like yeah, paromesia no. or something. Yeah, I don't it's even a really know. long word, but it's when you have lost uh, a sense like smell or taste. Yeah. It's not necessarily always with COVID. It happens to people with other things too. But that's the thing happening with some people from COVID. Yeah, yeah. So that's so. weird. So you think you have that because it's been like weeks, right? It's been over a month that I've had this. So like that. That refreshing diet do right there. What does that taste like when you drink it? Does some, it still taste like do? Some things taste like it. It's just very faint. You know what I mean? Jeez. Like a faint taste. And, and it's not like I'm sitting here like, oh, it's the worst thing ever. It's just weird. Yeah, it's it's just strange. Weird. Well, I remember when I had COVID, I, we, we were, me and you were, ate like Chick-fil-A one day. And I, I bit into the sandwich. I was like, I cannot taste anything. Yeah, you were pissed off. I remember I was that. really pissed. And then I just knew that I had it. And then you had it shortly after that, obviously, because yeah. we were in the car together. <laughs> yeah. We were, so, yeah. Yeah, it's fine. We got that herd immunity going on now. Yeah, so we're freaking we're, good. Even man. though I'm still coughing. Yeah. And uh, yeah. I can't taste food anymore. And you can't taste food anymore. We For might the rest should, of my life. We might should take this thing a little bit more seriously. But, yeah, uh, man. I'll get vaccinated eventually, I think. I don't know. But that's a whole other conversation. Yeah, why'd you even mention that, you well, dirty dog? Well, you know, I, don't, I think things shouldn't be taboo, you know? It's like we should be able to just speak freely in this country. So, you know. Well, for <laughs> that. <laughs> you were going to say it. I'm bleeping that whole sentence. <laughs> no, man. Look, I support people. I encourage people to get the vaccine, especially if you're an at-risk person, like oh, somebody yeah. who has health issues. My I would say, I, Yeah, I would say 100% get it. But what I don't like is when the government says you have to do this yeah. or else. See, that's what pisses me and a lot of people off. It's not even that I didn't want to get the vaccine. It's just that the mandates to push people, and they're just, they, want, they just want to push back naturally. So... Anyway, that's as much as I'll say about that. But let's read three new reviews. We've almost got 500 five-star reviews now really? on uh, Apple Podcasts. So big shout out to you guys. And if you did not know, on Apple, you can leave a five-star review and write a review, and you, it might get read on the show. So we've got one right here from Radical Slim Jim 2094 Wow. The usernames have been off the yeah. chain you on this. You guys are doing great. I love these usernames. Thanks, Lojo. Never been into podcasts, and I saw on Lojo's channel the podcast, so I started listening, and I'm not disappointed at all. Thanks, Lojo. He said thanks, Lojo, like three times. So thank you, dude. You're way more valuable to my channel than probably I am, I would say. Next one is Big Bucks, or Big Bucks RLP. Maybe that's his initials or something, or her initials. Real life people, baby. Is that what it is? I don't know. That sounds good. Big Bucks, real life people. Sure. 
Y'all are the best in the game. Love every podcast and your channel. Love watching and listening to both. Nice. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hopefully we see some big bucks here soon in the next couple months. There we go. Are you going to go hunting with me? Yeah, I'll go. Oh, are we going to go you. hunting? I'm not putting that crap on my channel. Right. Yeah. You Put a hunt video on my channel. All my subs <laughs> left me. <laughs> They said, frick you and your future family. When you drop that first hunting video, I think YouTube is just like, what? What's yeah. happening here? Yeah. You know, I've dropped a few leading up to the Gator video, so I kind of had a little bit of a leg to stand on. But yeah. yeah. Well, maybe we can fix it. It doesn't matter. Got one more. Baller Savage 23. This <laughs> podcast is amazing. I love this podcast. It is so funny, and I love how you bring in different YouTubers. Use code LOJO on GoogleSquad.com. Bring back Norm. Oh, what a freaking comment. Let's freaking go. He dude. hit like multiple levels yeah. of awesomeness right there. Guys, I, d I just want to say, too, I, I Googled it to see where we ranked, and you guys have got us to 174th podcast in the world, and I'm just so grateful. <laughs> really? <laughs> I think, I you think looked it up? I think we're 72nd. On what? On Apple? Apple. Yeah. 72nd in yeah. the world? Here's, here's what I'll say. I think the reason a lot of newer podcasts are ranking like number one is because they go into categories that really haven't been touched yet. I gotcha. Like, there's a podcast I listen to, like the Sea Bo Sea Boys, okay, something like that, and they're like number one in the business podcast, but every other podcast in the business is kind of boring. You know what I mean? Okay. So, so what are we in? Comedy, comedy interviews. Which is, which Joe is weird. Rogan is right. pretty much that. So maybe okay. we should recategorize and be like well. the number one swimming podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Just mention, mention swimming once a month. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. To be honest, when we launched this podcast, we didn't even know, you know, how to categorize it or how to get it on, on uh, Spotify and Apple. So the fact that we even got it there is amazing in and of itself. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's interesting. So we are you serious right now? You looked it up? Yeah, because I was trying to figure out how to look it up, but I, I'm just not. not that ain't it. Yeah, <laughs> I just couldn't I, figure it out. Sometimes I, I have no idea how you do YouTube. I know. Just watching you on your phone, I'm like, how? I'm just kind of like an old guy who still knows a few tricks, but I just the new stuff. I just right. I'm not even that old. I just don't care. I think that's I what think it, that's the. I just yeah. don't care to take the time to find something out that's not that important to me. I'm just. Yeah. You know, because I see the numbers from the podcast, so I know it's doing well. You yeah. know what I mean? Like I see the the total streams on the app on the uh, different apps, and I see the views on YouTube, so I know people are enjoying it. You yeah, know, me and you both sure. know that. So um, there's some big people out there who are paying attention to our podcast, and we had no idea we we're even paying attention to our podcast. Which so. is dope. Yeah. Yeah. So, and we're in the fishing industry, so we're we we got to be the number one podcast in the fishing industry, right? I I think so. I mean, I don't want to like call anybody out. I know Iconelli's got one, and it's probably awesome. I'm sure some other pros probably have one. I think we're the biggest, like hands down, not even a question. I don't know. You guys let us know because I'm not trying to be cocky here. I'm just saying, you know, we've been doing this for like nine months now, and I can't think off the top of my head of another like YouTube fishing centered podcast that's more relevant than this one is so i could be completely wrong i could be an idiot and i'm sorry but that's just kind of how it feels right now um okay cool well you know <laughs> how are we going to segue to this <laughs> i think you just got to dive into it man so i will tell you so you've been gone for like a week and yeah. as you know on YouTube, the life of a YouTuber, a week is a long time. It's very long. It's a long time. It's like a month yeah. in reality. So while you were gone, me and my new cameraman, whose name is also Andrew. Let's go. Who I affectionately call Andrew 2. Thank you. Um, we have been filming some videos and doing this and doing that. Me and him just been trying to get to know each other, honestly. It's like one-on-one, -on -one, you know. Okay. In fact, we need to get him on the podcast one day so we can actually should, inter introduce yeah. him. That'd be a good podcast. He could, like, be over here and he could also operate, like, some of the equipment, like a soundboard and stuff, too. Yeah. You know, but he'd be, like, a third little co-host. Like, little he'd have Jamie. a mic. Yeah, Jamie. Yeah. Like, he has a mic, but he's not really on it that much. It's just to, like, yeah. check stuff. I like that. And check equipment. You know, yeah, we yeah. yell at them some. Yeah. Anyways, but while we were out this one particular day on my boat, fishing a little lake, I had something happen to me that you might appreciate. Recent? Recent. Yeah. Well, the last week while you were gone. So we're out fishing, and everybody, in the, everybody listening or watching, I want you to hit me with the fact that either you relate with this or you can't. <laughs> but I think you're all going to relate to this as fishermen. I was out on the boat, middle of the lake fishing and all of a sudden 
something happens. Oh, no. Something strikes the old tummy region. Oh, no. And it's just like a nerve. And all of a sudden, your brain is like, oh, my God, (laughs) I have to poop now. You ever get that? You ever have that happen to you? Yeah, man. I was the king of that in high school. You were the king of pooping I was the king boats? of improper bowel movement, baby. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Hey, you do have some bowel things going on. Mm-hmm. One day, we need to just do a whole episode on your bowels <laughs> and good, just man. like how they work because they're actually pretty astounding. Yeah. yeah. Well. People don't know that between videos, when you're in my house, you're almost always on the toilet. Yeah, my stomach's more efficient than freaking <laughs> Amazon Prime, dude. <laughs> We're just shipping out. <laughs> as soon as you eat, it just comes right out. Yeah. <laughs> it's ridiculous. Dude. Well, anyways, so I had to just had to get on plane and just run 50 <laughs> oh, to the shore, get off on the shore where there's just alligators everywhere mm. and just find a nice little bush bush tree area and just squat it out. You know, you're, you're a big squat. guy. I'm a squat guy. I'm telling you right now, I have experienced all different kinds of pooping and weird situations. But the squat method, it's just nice. Yeah. It just, it feels good. Yeah. It gets it all out. Better. Yeah. <laughs> it's better than sitting on a toilet. I swear to God, if you've ever done it, you know what I'm saying is true. Yeah. And in fact, they've done science, like research, and that's the position that humans are supposed to be in when they poop. Squatty potty, man. Yeah, the squatty potty. That's yep. how that got invented. But you're not supposed to be sitting like with your legs and knees at a 90 degree angle. You're supposed to be way low, like butt right above the ground. And when you get like that, your insides get all like, you know, lined up. (laughs) I'm not sure the exact organs that are getting lined up, but Mm. it's like, it's the most efficient position to be in. (laughs) (laughs) Hey, I'm really serious about this. I mean, if you've never tried it and here's the thing, you're going to find yourself in a situation where you're on a boat and you got to poop. I mean, hopefully it doesn't happen like in the middle of a tournament or something, because that would just be bad. I've been in a similar situation on a boat. Yeah? But I wasn't fishing. What were you doing? I was watching I was watching July 4th fireworks with my wife and her family. <laughs> oh, God. You had the in-laws on the boat. How is this going to play out? I, I okay. can't wait to hear this. All right. So, because there's only a couple ways to play this without completely embarrassing yourself. <laughs> Let me backtrack. All right. So, we had been spending the weekend. They used to have a lake house. Um, sold it when I started fishing YouTube, which is just wow, fantastic. <laughs> that sucks. Yeah, <laughs> I got kicked out of all my ponds and the lake house. Sold as soon as I like actually had a career. But nice, it's, nice. It's all good. Yeah. Um. Anyway, so we spent the whole weekend leading up. It's July Fourth, so we're cutting back. You know. Big breakfast, ribs, wings, you know, like your classic yeah. July 4th weekend. So sure. I'm just filling up, man. Just grease, just greasing the gut. Grease, the, <laughs> greasing the gut up. <laughs> so they used to have a 34 foot pontoon. It was massive. Jesus, that's a big pontoon. It was huge. And they, they kept it on the dock. They never trailered it. But we were getting on the pontoon boat and riding around to the other end of the lake. Oh, grasshopper. He got away. Riding to the other end of the lake where the fireworks show was, right? Okay. So we get there. We're hanging out. Like an hour goes by, and I have to poop. Okay. It just hits me, you know? Yeah. And uh-huh. I'm like, why did I eat that much before we came out? Because it's 4th of July, man. You had to do it. Yeah. And I, I, anyway, so I'm like, oh, my gosh. So, like, maybe another hour goes by. I'm like, okay. I'm in a boat. My wife... Mm. Whom I just married, not even a year. You're not pooping in so you, front of her. Yeah, that. you can't poop in front of her yet. No. My, my father-in-law, my mother-in-law. Who you can never poop in front of. No, dude. Yeah. I don't even like taking my shirt off in front of them. Right. My brother-in-law, mm-hmm. and then my wife's granddad. Oh, grandparents in the mix, grandparents, too? Grandparents. Her cousin and her aunt are all in this boat, Right. Okay. And I've Jesus, always, that's a lot of freaking people. I keep forgetting it's a giant pontoon boat or else you'd be in a really bad situation. Okay, so, so what did you do? So I'm like, oh, gosh, man, I'm getting a little seasick. And it's just still as could be. I'm like, man, I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm getting motion sick, man. And Everybody's so the, just like, what the hell is wrong with what this What is guy? this guy talking about? Getting seasick. Boy, there ain't no damn waves out here. <laughs> so I hop in the water. And How is that going to help the motion sickness? <laughs> is that just what she's just the only thing you could think of? I just went for it. Or like it, maybe you wanted to cool off or something? Yeah, that's, I mean, I was like, maybe, you know, if I'm in the water. 
I might could buy that. I don't know. So I'm in the water and I'm like, okay, what do I, what can I do? So there's an island between, all right, so there, our boat, another boat of family, not our family, just a yeah. small family, island. And I'm like, maybe I can run up on this island and just go crap and come back. Mm -hmm. And then another family pulls up on the island as I'm thinking about it. They get out. Dang it. And so I'm sitting there and my heart's pounding. My, heart, my entire wife's family is around me. I have like three minutes to take off, if you know what I'm saying. Your like, butt's just puckering at this point. <laughs> Jesus. You're just holding it in. Yes. So, <laughs> matter of fact, I've never even told my in laws this story. You probably never should. Anyways. Luckily, they don't listen to the podcast. So. Yes, right. <laughs> I hope not. So, I, I go underneath the pontoon boat, full of my wife and her extended family. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, you just, just let her rip? I just pulled my pants around my ankles, and I'm oh, holding myself underneath the pontoon. Oh, and it just how deep of water were you released. in? Released. I mean, I couldn't touch bottom. You could? No. Oh, you couldn't? No. So, man, you could have just had a sea creature looking up at you. Oh, I probably did. But probably then he saw did. what left your body, and he was like, oh, my God. <laughs> He's like, I'm getting out of here. Leave this guy alone. <laughs> th this might be a little too much information, but please, you know, like, it's getting a little dark, right? So I'm like, okay. If they're floaters, it's a little dark. Right, it'd be hard to see. Right, ends up they are floaters. Oh, so I'm I'm underneath my family. Well, see that's unusual. I feel like because I I feel like when you have a really bad like you have to go. Normally it's like like diarrhea, not floaters. Well, uh, but your body just works differently. I this guess. is so in detail. <laughs> I'm so <laughs> grossed out. I'm just saying, is it like an emergency bathroom visit always like loose like diarrhea liquid? That's just what I thought. I didn't know people had emergency bathroom trips you might where need they to just get drop the log. checked out. So yeah. it's just me. I'm the one that's messed up. Yeah, I don't know what you have going on. I don't I either. was underneath there just battling, just pushing everything away, fighting some little hot snakes. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It was graphic. It was so disgusting. What, so did the floaters come up, like, by you? Yeah. So I'm just under did there. Did you, like, you take your pants? You take your pants off? <laughs> They're around my ankles. You just dropped them. Right. And then ripped it. And then... Dude, what is that like? It's like giving birth in the water. What is that? Uh, have in, you ever pooped in water? I've never pooped in water. It is a weird feeling. It, it is disgusting <laughs> on so many different ways. <laughs> this is horrible. It was terrible, man. It's like... Uh, and if the, I mean, it climbs up you. Oh, yeah. God. Yeah, <laughs> so, gravity. It's got to, like, come up. Yeah, so I, oh. I get away from it finally, you know. Oh, Get away from it. <laughs> I get out from underneath my family pull my pants up as I'm, I'm going out. Yeah. And then I'm just sitting like 20 yards from the boat, just floating. And they're like, you feel okay? I'm like, yeah, I'm feeling fine. <laughs> Wait, so when you were underneath the boat and you were just kind of like holding yourself there, did you, could you still like hear the family? Dude, yes, man. It's so it was like you were, you were right below them, basically. Yeah, I was directly below my father-in-law. You could have grabbed your father-in-law's leg I if there wasn't like a deck there. I could have just reached up, just clacked his cheeks. You know what I mean? <laughs> I was just sitting there. And you're like, just oh, dumping God. your little heart out. Yeah. And I, I mean, oh Aunt, my Grandpa, God. they're all talking, just watching the fire. What a nice nice evening. <laughs> you know? And little do they know, you are just <laughs> I'm under there like, oh, evacuating your bowels. Gosh. Oh, my God. And so I get out, and I'm, I'm floating. And, <laughs> dude, it's just like. Uh, well, look, here's the thing. I'm not going to make you feel bad because I know for a fact this has happened to probably every angler we know. Yeah. In fact, you know what we need to do? We need to pick up the old phone. We need to start making some phone calls and seeing if we're the weird ones or else, or, or see if this actually happens to other people. All right, guys. So like we said in the intro, this podcast is always brought to you by shopcarls.com, but they have given me the right to authorize a deal for you guys as subscribers and listeners to the Fishing After Dark podcast that they do not offer to any buddy else. If you use our code after dark 10, we're going to put it on the screen, all one word after dark 10, you can get $10 off your next order. Now you need to be a Carl's club member to get this deal, but it's even better. It gets better. If you're not a member yet, you can sign up to be a member for 30 days for free when you use that code. So you're going to become a Carl's club member for free. You're going to get $10 off your next order. And then once you're a Carl's club member, you're going to get 30% off in a lot of cases off of all types of lures, rods, line, guggenbaits on the website. Plus, it gives you access to Carl's Tackle Insurance, which allows you to have to insure up to four hard baits a year with a, like a value of like $20 or something like that and get those replaced. So if you snag a 
snag a log, have to break off your crankbait. If you lose, if you lose your crankbait right by the boat, a fish breaks it off, then they will replace it for you up to four times per year. Click the link right at the top of the description or click the link in the show notes. That way you guys can take advantage of this awesome offer. So big shout out to Shop Carls for providing you guys with one of the best deals that I've seen. Now back to the podcast. <clears throat> Yeah, there you go. You get me real giggly. <laughs> get him giggly. All right, here we go. Let's call some men's. Is your sound all the way up? Yes. Is there any chance Peric answers this? No way. No chance. You think probably, he's up? He's probably mm-hmm. in Calif- or, uh, Colorado right now, just blazed out of his freaking gourd. <laughs> Jeez. God dang it, Peric. Been Son of a biscuit. Not only did he miss your phone call, he forwarded that thing to voicemail. You think he did that? I hope so. <laughs> <coughs> Should we call our parents? Let's try our old Rob. <laughs> you These people have no idea. Hello. Hey, what's up, buddy? Oh, no, what's going on? Nothing much. Just uh, doing a little research for a, for a podcast. And um, I just <laughs> I just had a, a question for you um, about uh, so we're talking about pooping like having to poop while being out on the boat. Do you have any experience with that? I mean, you'd fish the tour. You probably had a couple close calls, right? I have had more close calls. Than you I've actually had more than a close call. I actually shit myself. One day. <laughs> Wait, while on the boat? Yeah, that was this year. Oh my God! Well, can you? I, yeah, I mean, dude actually knows this story. This is kind of funny. Nice. I, uh, I, no, I posted a photo on Instagram with like no sleeves. Uh huh. And uh, <laughs> I don't know. I ate something really <laughs> and bad, I guess, for me, and it stuck with me for like a week, and it just kept getting worse and worse and worse. And I'm just like any other guy in the world, I would just, uh, I just let it be. You know, I just went. It's like it'll just go away at some point. Yeah. Wait, so you, I remember that photo of you sleeveless. That's why, that, that's what, that's what yeah, happened? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, I remember I went back into this pocket and I was catching them out on the main lake pretty good. And I was like, man, I got to go find somewhere to take it like now. So I went, I went back into this pocket and there was all these, at the front of the pocket, there was all these uh, workers working on the house in the front yard. And I was like, oh, shit, I, I, I got to keep going. I got to keep going. And it's like, it's like eight in the morning or nine in the morning. So there's, it's kind of nice. There's people everywhere and it was a yeah. weekend. Oh, it's oh a weekend. God. Oh, no. Dude. So I hit the bank. And I, when I mean I hit the bank, I, I, t- I said to myself, oh, shit, it's coming. Oh, shit, it's coming. It's coming. It's <laughs> coming. And I, like, put the boat in drive uh-huh. and then hit the gas really hard so I can get some momentum. Yeah. Put it back in neutral, killed it, took my life vest off, ran to the front of the boat. And as I was running to the front of the boat, it, like, started to come out. And I was like, oh, no, 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 no. And I jumped off the front of the boat. <laughs> Oh. Didn't, even, didn't put my poles down or nothing onto the bank and as I'm like running up somebody's front yard to try to get to a wood line I started to shit myself like no and I had to take everything off like right then so I'm standing butt naked in this person's front front, front yard oh my god butt naked because I had I, I like had shit all over my shorts and my underwear and like everywhere and I was like wearing uh, wearing my long sleeve shirt and it's like I have nothing to wipe my ass with so I took my shirt off so now I'm literally standing Butt naked in somebody's front yard yeah. at nine o'clock in the morning, and I then cut my sleeves off and then wiped my ass and then put my uh, <laughs> shorts in the water, washed them off. Oh my, in the my water, god! The sleeves. So I'm saying, yeah, I was, I was butt ass naked, like legit naked. Dude, you know? that that is crazy. Was that yes, that? Were you like pre-fishing or what? What were you doing when it happened? Yeah, I was practicing and it was in uh, Tennessee. Oh, man, that poor person's yard, whoever that was. Did you film any of it? Jesus. Yeah, did you include any of that in a video? <laughs> no, I didn't. No one knows that. That's an untold story. Man, holy smokes. Well, dude, that's, that's literally the best uh, thing I could have ever heard this morning. That's got me in a fantastic mood. <laughs> we were literally just talking about our worst, like, trying to take a, take a dump on a boat stories, and uh, I think you got us all beat with that one. No, I actually took a literal shit on myself on a boat <laughs> hey don't feel bad man i've pooped myself in afghanistan before so I, it does uh I'm, I'm sure you've had some close calls overseas too but that's uh I a lot I don't 
<laughs> it's a good it's a good part of the daily routine, man. <clears throat> well, uh, well, you gonna film a podcast today? Your new speak the truth thing. I'm literally sitting inside this little studio thing right now, putting it together as we speak. Nice. These things take a long time to put together. I wish I could just have like a co-host that I could just have a conversation with, but no, yeah. I'm gonna sit up for like three hours every morning putting together the news things to. Yeah. It's a lot. It's 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 a lot of work the way you do it, but it actually turns out really well. Though I meant to tell you, it's I've been listening. It's uh, pretty good stuff, man. I like it. I appreciate it. Hopefully, it continues because we're still in the top twenty-five in the world on Spotify. Oh yeah, you guys are killing it, man. It's freaking awesome. Glad somebody's out there spitting the truth. I like it. <laughs> yeah. All right, buddy. Well, we'll let you go. That was a hell of a story, man. That uh, yeah. made made my loins tingle a little bit. So well, you know, yeah, I'm glad I could do something for you. <laughs> Yeah. Well, dude, keep keep up with the podcast, man. It's good. Sh- All right, bud. All right, brother. I'll talk to you later. All right, bye. Wow. Well, we could not have gotten a better story on the fly than that right there. That was perfect. Man. Hopefully, you guys heard it uh, pretty pretty well because that was not that was not uh, we did not warn Rob at all. We no, just called him. Just called him. <laughs> you know, Rob catches a lot of flack for this or for that, but you got to you got to say one thing: the dude is honest. He nope. doesn't sugarcoat anything. No. Nope. He just says what he believes or what's on his mind. And I think that that's like that commands a lot of respect for me. You know what I mean? Because no, there's so I, many yeah. people that just won't like they just won't talk. They won't be themselves. They won't right. be vulnerable. You yeah. know what I mean? Like that's kind of an embarrassing story. Of course I'll have to I'll have to make sure he's okay with us putting it in the podcast, but Nah, you good. I think he knew we were on the podcast. You were talking like you were on a podcast. Yeah, I think he knew. But anyways, that was uh Jesus. So pre fishing a tournament in a big old twenty one foot skeeter. Just rammed a bank. <laughs> I was visualizing it so well. like Yeah, especially when he took his clothes off. Oh, well, I, I visualize that well every night. But, oh. uh, hey oh, hey oh, fishing. Yes. No, but like when he was talking about getting getting some head of steam up to like, you know, mm-hmm. get your nose up on mm-hmm. the bank. Because we've done that a million times for oh, yeah. different reasons. But, yeah, it's just I could see him like in the in, getting on the throttle like, oh, my God, oh, my God. And then slap it neutral, run up front, take the life jacket off. Ah, jump <laughs> on the land as the nose is hitting land, yeah. scraping the prop on the on the mm-hmm. ground. Woo, man, that was a good. One. I think his tops any story that we're gonna get. You think it point. tops me crapping underneath my family? Well, I think your story is good. It's just the it just didn't quite have the uh, the urgency. Of course, maybe you maybe you were. I just urgent. told it a little different. Yeah, yeah you yeah. told it a little bit more chill. His was like he remembered immediately because that like stuck out in well, his mind. Mine happened like three years ago, so it wasn't you know as fresh. I mean? yeah. yeah, it's not as fresh. He yeah. crapped himself this week. You yeah, know that what I'm was. In, he said, "Did he say July?" I, I think or, he said this morning. <laughs> this <laughs> happened this morning. He's like, "Dude, I am covered in crap right yeah, now." Yeah, I'm still cleaning the crap off myself <laughs> yeah. right <Yeah>. now. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. Okay. Big shout out to old Robert Turkla. You see, he changed his channel name, by the way. I did. Robert I Turkla. Did. Why, you, I, I, why? I think he's uh, probably going through a rebranding phase, if I had to guess, with the podcast and with the name change. I mean, I did the same thing about a year and a half ago. I changed from Lojo.Fishing, which to me was just a dumb name. I just picked the name at the very beginning. You know, yeah. I didn't think that it was going to be an actual brand. And I changed it to Lojo, right. all one word, because not that I wanted to get away from fishing. I just wanted to be able to do anything. Yeah. You know, so yeah. I just changed it to Lojo. So that's I'd have to guess. Um but yeah, his podcast is doing really well. So yeah, for sure. His is twenty five in the world, probably politics or something, or like news commentary or something. Should we get more? Oh God, no! Political? Let's get political. I don't know dude. if we can get political and still stay like a fishing show, though. We just have to have a separate podcast and just bash politics. Yeah, left and right. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you had me at politics. You had me. Let's call somebody else, shall we? Yeah, call them. All right, let's see if we can get somebody to bite. Who is it? One rod. One rod. Come on, buddy. Come on, buddy. What's up, Hey, what's up, buddy? What's up, man? It's uh, my kid watches uh, Garbage Truck Song here. Yeah, yeah well, I, it sounds like you're uh, doing some daddy duties. Uh, I am. What's up with you? Nothing much, man. We're just... Uh, Doing a little research for for a podcast here, and right. um, I are you super busy, man? Because I, I I only need you for like five minutes, but if you're busy, I understand the dad I'm, life. No, no, I'm I'm good right now. He's, he's watching, so I'm cool. Okay, 
Um, by the way, I might be seeing you in a couple weeks, maybe, right? Oh, maybe. Yeah? I think so. I think I'm going to be up your way, I think. I'm not sure about that yet, but... All right, well, let me know if you are. You yeah. You're going to be up there northeast of Maryland? Yeah, I'm going to be in Pennsylvania, but I, which is not oh, nec- yeah, not really true. close, but I think I might be over there, too. I'm not sure yet. Um, All right, cool. But, okay, so, so let me hit you with a scenario, okay? All right. So we're talking about best, like, having to poop while fishing stories. <laughs> and I just feel like you're—I feel like you're the type of guy because you're one of my yeah, favorites. I got a couple. Yeah, I well, got a couple, dude, if sure. you if you can with kids around, hit hit us with your your best having to poop while fishing story. <laughs> Wait, like right now? Well, I mean, if if you want to, yeah, I, can I, mean. do it. I can do it right now. But you want me to do it right now? Yeah, dude, hit it, hit it. Lance? Oh, I did that? Lance videos? Oh, well. He's uh, on daddy duty. You want to use my phone now? Lance can. You can use my phone in five minutes, okay? <laughs> tell a story. Five minutes, okay? Yeah, tell him the story. He okay, needs to know this about cool. his daddy. All right, I got two for you. All okay. Right, let me start with the. Uh, let me start with the one that's that's not as disgusting. I feel. <laughs> oh. I'm gonna go with one of- okay. <laughs> oh no, I lost him. I bet you his kid pushed a button. You call him right back. I'm calling him. <laughs> you call that man. <laughs> or it just could be bad service. I don't know. Oh, you dude. know how the service is in this building. It's a little. It's a little weak. But I had Rob, though. Yo, sorry, missed your call. Be sure to leave a message. Oh, leave my. Number, and I'll get back to you. Oh, dude. You think his phone died? Oh, no, dude. Oh, man. That was the ultimate tease, He dude. said he had two stories, and one was really disgusting. Yeah, and he was about to start. He was like, yeah, Damn that's it. what I... He's like, yeah, this one time I was... And what? What? Yeah. <laughs> Mike, no. I, I was hanging off a cliff while I was fishing. I know, right? Yeah. Damn it. Okay, we'll, we'll try to wait for him to call back, but uh, damn, he's got two stories. I'm trying to think of who, who else we could call. I don't want to call everybody, because I feel like some people are going to be able to tell these poop stories better than others. Like That's yeah. why I wanted to call Rob. I wanted to call One Ride, because those, those are like storytelling guys. They yeah. want to tell you a story anyways, Yeah, yeah. and they can, they can just tell it so well. I just called Parrot, because I knew he wasn't going to answer. Yeah, it was, yeah. yeah. And but, he's hot. But, and he's cool. <clears throat> and he's a cool little short guy. Super sexy. <laughs> <laughs> Big crypto guy. Damn it. Okay. Well, we're just going to have to move on and hope that he calls back. <laughs> he had no story. He was like, yeah, I got two. <laughs> he just hung up on us because he's like, nah. Nah, my kid's right here. Can't do it, dog. I'm going to try to call him back one more time, but it's very likely his phone died or something because that went straight to voicemail. So. Man, dude. What a freaking tease. Dude, my heart is sunk, dude. That's bad. Hey, buddy. Sorry. Did we lose you or did you lose us? Nah, uh, you lost me. I think it's your uh, connection might be a little spotty. Yeah, probably so, but uh, we're all ears, buddy. We're all ears. Okay, I got two stories. All right. Uh, let's, just, let's just hop into it. So the first one... You want the lawnmower? Right, we gotta nice. Put your diaper on. You want the lawnmower? <laughs> oh, dude, you are so you got your hands full right now, bro. I can try to spout out the stories. If it works out, it works out. If it doesn't, it doesn't. All right, send so, it. The first one is when I was in, living in Ohio. I was um, driving right after college, and I was in the first one. I was fishing the Olentangy River. They have a they have a bike path for like walkers and stuff. Like yeah. And that's the uh, that's the path that I walk on in order to uh, to you know walk up the river and fish. And it just so happens that day, I had, I must have, the last, the night before, I must have eaten something bad. I think I had, I had, I think I had Mexican or Chinese, I forgot, but. Dang it. Some, my stomach was like, just dying, and there was no bathroom nearby for at least a couple miles. So what I did is, I squatted under a bridge. Squatted, baby. I took, dude, I just unleashed a massive, <laughs> explosive load. I, I couldn't even hold it. I couldn't even hold it. And, Oh in Ohio, my God! There's a, there's a lot of homeless people. Uh huh. I didn't realize it, but like ten feet away from me was a homeless person oh, sleeping. Oh no! <laughs> no. <laughs> they, started, they started stirring. <laughs> Probably when they heard it, I just when I saw them moving, I just like bolted out of there as fast as I could. Oh, it woke them up! It woke them up. <laughs> Dude, it it, it would. I think it woke anyone who would have been sleeping <laughs> in a hundred foot radius would have woken up. <laughs> Dude, that wait. So you've got another story that's better than that one? Oh my god! Um, the other one, I don't know if it's better, but it is. I mean, they're both pretty good. I like I said, I have two, and that, that was they're both about maybe about equal. I don't know. You can be the judge. The second one, I was in uh, New Jersey, 
fishing uh, local lake, Haddon Lake. Uh-huh. And again, this is just a little pond, community pond, and surrounded by houses, and there's just nowhere to use the bathroom, and it was in the morning. Yeah. Uh, I just had to go. I mean, I just had to go, and I was like, oh, I'm not driving. I'm not leaving. I wasn't going to leave because the top water bite was on fire. Oh, you can't so, leave. Yeah. Yeah. There's an overhanging <laughs> overhanging uh, pile of brushes. There's like a big pile of brush, and all the other people walking around, it was pretty thick. So I went all the way into the thickest brush right near the water, uh-huh. and I just, uh, I mean, I just unloaded a nice, smooth... <laughs> Dookie right into the water. <laughs> uh, you know, it, it, yeah. It was like a, it was like one of those no wipers. They're the real clean. Oh yeah. You want when you're outdoors. Congrats. Those are nice. Yeah, yeah those are very and nice. I swear, dude. A three pounder came right up to it and checked it out. It didn't eat it, but it checked it out. I was like, what the? No hell? freaking I like, way. <laughs> I was like, you throw all these random lures that sometimes don't work, and then I just unloaded, you know, like a seven inch in the water. <laughs> <laughs> Check it out. And I was like, when you guys made the lunker log, I was like, oh man, maybe this is what they. Oh, dude, I was <laughs> just about to say, you gave him a real life lunker log, dude. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Jesus, wow! That if he had ate it, that would have been even crazier. Oh. But <laughs> that would have been crazy. Thank God he didn't eat it, because that kind of would have made me lose respect for largemouth bass mm-hmm. if he had ate that. <laughs> yeah. I know they're pretty dumb, but jeez, <laughs> they eat all kinds of dumb stuff when they're in the mood. That's the damn truth. Wow. <laughs> Dude, that's that's amazing, man. Those are two amazing stories. But um, we got to have you back on the podcast again one day, man. Um, oh yeah. We got to. Where are you living nowadays, Alabama? Yeah, something? I'm still in Alabama, so you know I'm in the middle of nowhere. But um, hopefully, I'll see you here in a couple weeks, man. I think I'm going to be in your neck of the woods, so I'll definitely uh, hit you up, dude. Sounds good, man. Just let me know. I'll be around. How's the new baby, man? New baby's good. I'm. Uh, I have him in my right arm, swinging him in a bass net. He's sleeping. Nice, and, uh, nice. Lance is over here playing with his uh, bulldozer. Nice man, dude. Being a dad's fun, isn't it? Uh, it is a lot of work, but it's definitely the most rewarding. Yeah, definitely, man. Well, I'm happy for you, brother. Love to the family, and uh, we'll holler at you later, dude. Sounds good. All right, have a good one, man. All right, buddy. Bye. Dude, wow. he may have. That may have outdone Rob, I'm- the homeless guy. I can't believe he crapped on top of a homeless man. <laughs> Took a dump 10 feet from a homeless man. I guess he didn't see him because it was just... Yeah. I, I get it, though, because you get in a mad panic where you have to poop, yeah. and you really forget about your surroundings, just like Tunnel Rob vision. was in somebody's yeah, yeah, yard. Yeah. yeah, I mean, it just it becomes so bad. At a certain point, you just don't care. You If you had kept waiting, you probably could have just hung your butt off the side of the boat and just dumped. Yeah, in front of your I mean, family because it gets to a things. certain point where you just cannot control it anymore. You, yeah, you have to. You have so to. So you have to do it, or else you're just going to go in your pants, right? Which nobody wants to do. Yeah. So, dude, that's amazing. He crapped on a homeless guy, basically, and then the guy woke up, looked at him, and, <laughs> and he took off running. <laughs> I forgot to ask, did he wipe or anything? Because that's no. really the real question. If you if he didn't get to wipe, man, that's a bad day. Could you imagine waking up? You're camping with your family, and there's a man just. <laughs> Panically, there's an Asian man just dumping right next to your campsite. Just (laughs) (laughs) and then just running. (laughs) Just oh, (laughs) oh my God! Okay, (laughs) Jesus, I we're gonna have a hard time out doing those. I'm gonna I'm gonna tell a quick Norm story. I don't need Norm to tell this story. Oh no, because I was there. But uh, I got one more for you guys. So fishing with Norm, one of our best buddies in the whole world, been on the podcast a couple times. Yep. He was fishing with me one day, although we were in two different boats, but we were in a small lake, so we were near each other. In fact, he was in my boat, and I was in his boat. We had switched boats for a video or something. Okay. And I had Zade in my boat as well. Nice. So he was by himself. All right. Got some gas. Hold on. A little throat. A little throat (laughs) throat gas. Um, uh, So, yeah. So we're fishing against each other 1v1. You know, best five or the biggest bass wins, whatever. And and all of a sudden, Norm is in the water. Okay. Right? So he was just on the boat, and now he's in the water, hanging off the boat with his hands up on the side. (laughs) So I'm like, like, did you just fall in? Or, you know, like, what what is happening? Because I never heard anything. He's just in the water. And he he was just kind of like, he was yelling, but he was kind of far enough away where I didn't understand what he was saying. Right, right. So we start trolling over to him. Yep. And he sees us trolling over to him, and he's just like, no, no, don't come over here. 
<laughs> and then I found out, I figured out he was just dumping. Just right, he right. couldn't wait. I remember him saying earlier he had to take a dump, but everybody always says that. So yeah, you don't know like how bad it is, or yeah. you know, are you gonna have to jump in the water? So he, so he took the badge approach. He was like, you know what? It's a hot summer day. Yep. The water feels fine, anyways. Just yeah. dive in the water, hold on to the side of the boat. Drop your. I'm assuming he dropped his pants and yeah. just let her rip. So, oh man. And then after that, ironically, after that, the bite really picked up in that area. I swear, I swear to God, because we caught like a ton. Chummed him up. Yeah, it's like he chummed him up. Chummed just him like, up. Just like one rod was just saying, like that bass was interested in his lunker log. Maybe bass and poop. It's just you know they like stinky stuff. We should do it, man. We should do what? It's me, you, and Daryl <laughs> go out, hang over the edge, and chum them up, baby. <laughs> we should go in, wade out to, into my pond, waist deep, mm -hmm. and just all just sit there and just dump. I do that every time I come. <laughs> you do it real early in the morning when you get here, right? Right. You just run right. It's like your routine. Run right down the pond, yep. get in there. <laughs> That's why my fish are dying. You jerk. <laughs> Just slowly poisoning the pond, just filling it with radioactive butt waste. <laughs> Jesus. Jesus oh, Christ. This is getting off the freaking rails, man. Well, we're at that time in the podcast where it is going off the rails. but So let me ask you this, Badge. Okay. Because you and I have, it seems like we have different ideas of how to successfully execute a boat poop. Okay. It sounds like I would prefer to run up on land and find a land spot. Like okay. a place to actually like feet on the ground, squat, like. tree, hang right. back. Yeah. Right. Sounds like you are more of a, hey, look, just going to get in the water and just rip it. So let's just say we're in like a tournament, right? Okay. Or, and of course it's all situational. It depends. It depends on different situations. But in the moment, which one would you prefer? You prefer a water berth or a land, you know, controlled environment, land, Depends. It depends. Definitely depends because you know the water one's going to be the quickest way. Yeah. Because if like, if you were fishing a tournament or something, you could just set spot lock yeah. and go to the back of the boat and jump off. You could be back in the boat fishing within like a minute. Now I've heard guys will straddle their merch. Hang hang the butt off. Hang the butt off. Yeah. Which wave comes? That's dangerous. Man. Yeah, it's dangerous, and it's like why go through all that? Yeah. I mean, you're you're fishing a tournament. You're probably wearing shorts and flip-flops just freaking run to the bank i i think i would actually rather do land like i would rather have done land in the situation where i crapped underneath my entire wife's family but what if you were like fishing offshore like, like you were like like okeechobee like seven miles offshore dude there's gators dog there's i know that gators. but that's scary but it's like what if you can't hold it then to, i would to make a 10 minute run back to land i would do the hang i would have to do the hang dude that seems m like messy potentially yeah, but. I don't know where that poop's going to go. I don't know if something's going to like <sighs> dribble back into the boat. I mean, I don't know, man. That's that's like. Let me ask you this. Okay. What's your worst like high school poop story? Do you have any high school poop stories? No high school. I have an Afghanistan poop my pants story. What happened? I was on guard duty, which, you know, that's a sacred thing. Okay. When you're in a combat scenario, obviously, you have to freaking, you know, you're, this is at night too. Okay. Not late at night, but at night, probably like after supper. All right. And uh, I was about 15 minutes away from getting relieved anyways. Like, so I had somebody else coming. Right. To relieve me. And, you know, you have a radio, you have your machine gun, you got your M4, you got all this stuff, and you got a little tower, a little seat. And it hits me, just like it, we all just said it. Eventually, it just it hits you. It's just like your body yeah. is like, all right, here we go. You know. Yeah. Now, one thing about poops and that feeling is they they come in waves. Right. There's like waves. Yeah. Like the initial wave hits you, and sometimes you can manage that first wave right. and just will it away, and it goes away, and then you're just kind of chilling. But then that wave comes back, and every time it comes back, it comes back stronger. Yep. And then eventually, it's just gonna come out. You know, right. your body's going to expel it, whether you want to or not. Okay. So I was riding these waves, and I radioed to, you know, whoever I was talking to, my squad leader or whatever, and I was just like, I was just like, hey, you know, is there any way that, I think Jones was a buddy of mine, he was coming to relieve me. Okay. Like, is there any way Jones can come like five, ten minutes early and relieve me? Because I've got to take a Right. And I think what happened was Jonesy, who was my buddy, but he also, we fought a lot. Nice. I think he thought that I was just trying to get out of guard duty early. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. And he was just like, nah, man, nah, I ain't coming. Now, nobody ever answered me, but nobody ever came. So I'm just like, I'm rocking, you know, I'm freaking, because I can't abandon my post. That's mm -hmm. the thing. Like, I cannot leave and go to the, you know, the sh** because we had a little area with like an ammo can and some sandbags. That was our toilet. Yeah. You know. And, but it was like 100 yards away. Like, so there was no way I could leave my post for yeah. 10 minutes. Yeah. That's a long time. That you know what I mean? Time. If I got caught, I'd get in serious trouble. And I just could have got somebody killed. So I can't leave. So I'm just like rocking. You know, I'm just puckering. You're just doing anything. You're just like, you know, talking. Yeah. You know, just freaking. Wow. Waiting. Five minutes goes by. Still not there. And I just freaking. I, I, I. I like hopped up on a on a Hesco barrier, which is like a giant open sandbag. Okay. Basically, on the top is open. I just like jumped on top of it, and I was shitting my pants as I was pulling my pants down. Mm. And then I finally got them out and just blew the rest into the top of a Hesco barrier, which is just basically just dirt. Nice. And then as soon as I got done, I just I buried it real quick with dirt, pulled my pants back up, and went back in the guard tower. And about two minutes later, Jonesy showed up, and I was. Pissed. I bet. I almost punched him in the face. I, but bet. I, I didn't say anything. I just walked off <laughs> and went and threw my freaking pants away and put threw them in the burn barrel and just wow. went to bed. But yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> it was pretty. That was the only time I've ever pooped my pants in my life. Yeah, because I just I could not hold it anymore. Yeah, Couldn't do it. Brutal. It's Your terrible. body just it's only gonna do it for so long. So. No, what's funny is the story you just told. I just remembered is the first video I ever put on my YouTube channel. Oh, how I pooped my pants. Lojo that's right. Pants I remember that. Yeah. yeah. That's right. That's kind of funny. Clout farming son of a bitch. That's what I'm known for. <laughs> so do you have any other poop stories, man? I think we've about pooped this thing out, if you know what nice. I mean. Nice. There we I go. I like, like that. that. Yeah. No, I'm good. I'm, I'm, I'm ready to move on from the feces talk. Yeah, I think uh, this one kind of got out of hand. But, you know, I think it's a common problem. I think you guys would agree, if you're listening. It's relatable. Or watching. It's very sure. relatable. It, it you go out on the water enough times, eventually you're going to have those two events coincide. You're going to be fishing, you're going to be in a boat, or even on the bank. I mean, it's not comfortable to poop if you don't have something to wipe with. I mean, it's just really, it's really bad. Yeah. I will give people a tip. Socks are the go-to. Socks. If you can, because it's easy, you can get, you can get rid of them. Who cares if you lose a pair of socks? Nope. There's two of them, so you can get two, a double, triple, quadruple wipe in there, mm. you know? So yeah, socks is the move. I have done that on patrol before nice. in Afghanistan. Nice. But, uh, yeah. So, anyways, thank you guys for watching. Thank you for listening. Remember, if you guys are on Apple Podcasts, give us a five-star review. Write a review. We might read it on the show. If you're on Spotify, make sure you subscribe or follow, whatever that process is. If you're listening on this new channel, watching on this new channel, I should say, make sure you guys are subscribing and have the bell notification enabled. That way, YouTube will actually tell you when we drop a podcast one final shout out to shopcarls.com for sponsoring the podcast hopefully you guys go and take advantage of that deal that they're giving our listeners thank you badge <laughs> my brain just stopped working for a second thank you badge for uh, everything today thank you to one rod and lunkers for participating in our shenanigans yeah that was awesome Huge big, shout out. big frick you to alex perrick mm. for just refusing to participate in the podcast mm -hmm. we're gonna catch him slipping one day though right one day I'm just going to text him like emergency 911 and then I'm going to call him and he's going to answer because he's going to think I'm dead in a ditch or something. Nah, he wouldn't answer. He's still... <laughs> He'd be like, nah, man, you got this. Nah, dog. I don't know you like that. <laughs> I don't know you. <laughs> but yeah, anyways, hopefully, hopefully you guys enjoyed the poop talk and we will be back at you guys with another podcast in about five or six days from now. Until next time, love you guys. Peace. Peace. Out. Oh, damn.